Welcome, Clinic Review family. It's Dr. Sharon with Clinic Reviews. In my opinion, the very best NCLEX review business in the world. Check us out at clinicreviews.com to see if we have an online or in-person review coming up. Thank you for your support of our channel. Seriously, it means a lot at this point. We have over 25,000 subscribers in less uh, less than seven months, about six months. And um, so I, it, I just really appreciate it. So thank you very much. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. We are talking about the 50 essential meds you need to know for NCLEX. And we're on our last video. If you haven't watched the other videos, that's okay. You can um, just go back and watch them. It doesn't, they don't have to be watched in any order. Okay. All right. A client who was diagnosed with Alzheimer's dementia several months ago and has just been prescribed Aricet, Dunepazil, which of the following statements made by his wife indicates the need for further teaching. So this is a false statement. I like it when it says further teaching, because when I see further teaching, that always makes me think false. F in further goes with F in false. So I'm looking for the false statement. So they've got Alzheimer's and they just start got started on a med for Alzheimer's. Okay. So that's what I know about it. If he forgets to take a dose, he will just wait. I, we will just wait and give him his next dose at the scheduled time. I don't see why not. Um, it's not the end of the world. I mean, I'd rather he remember, but if he doesn't just take it the next time it's due, that sounds okay to me Two, We will cut out caffeine in the evening. So he doesn't have trouble sleeping. That sounds like a good idea. No problem with that. If you don't know, uh, to use your common sense when you're taking these tests, make sure you go back and watch the SATA videos. I talk a lot about common sense in there. Don't throw your common sense out the window, by the way, when you're taking this test. Okay. Three, if this med makes him, him nauseous, he can take it with food. Well, that sounds okay to me. Um, most meds can be taken with food. And in general, I always assume they can be, unless I know specifically that they can't. And this is not one I think specifically that they can't take it with food. So that seems okay to me. Four, I'm so glad he will get his memory back after starting this medication. Oh, now I, don't, I know that's not true. I know he's not going to get his memory back. Okay. It might help slow the progression of his Alzheimer's. Um, but it's not going to give him his memory back. That is not the reason that we start him on Aricet. Okay. So I know four is false. So I got to I got to correct that. That's a false statement. I'm, I don't want her to think he's going to get his memory back. That's not helpful to her. So I want you to notice, you didn't really have to know anything about Dinepazil to get this right. You had to just think, you had to use your common sense to get this right. And I want to just strongly <laughs> encourage you not to throw your common sense out the window when you're taking the test. Think what makes the most sense here, particularly when it comes to farm questions. When you get a drug question, think what makes the most sense here? What do I generally teach people? What do I generally not teach people? Use your common sense, y'all. That will help you pass faster than anything else. Okay, 47. Which of the following would you teach to a client who's newly starting on rifampin? Rifampin. So I may say, well, what do I know about rifampin? I know rifampin is for TB, tuberculosis. And although I don't know that much about rifampin specifically, I know that drugs that are for TB, you're going to take them for probably at least six months, at least six months, maybe a year depending. So that's what I know. Okay. I know rifampin is for TB and, and I, and I know you're probably going to take it for a long time. So that's all I know. And I go, well, other than that, I'm going to use my common sense. All right. It's, oh, it's a SATA question. It's a SATA question. So I'm going to, so I'm, I'm looking at what I would teach. So I'm looking for the true statements. If you develop a rash or fever, stop taking rifampin and call your healthcare provider. Well, that sounds pretty true. Rash fever, that's allergic reaction. If they get a rash or a fever. I don't want them to have an allergic reaction to this drug. So absolutely they need to stop taking it and call the healthcare provider. That's a adverse reaction, y'all. That's not, that's no side effect. All right. So true. One is true. Two, you can stop taking this med when you're feeling better. Well, no, 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 no. They're probably going to start feeling better long before they can stop taking it. And two is never true, by the way. You never stop taking med just because you're feeling better. Three, if you develop a rash, take 25 milligrams of diphenhydramine. Well, if rash were a side effect, then three would be an okay answer. But rash is not a side effect. Rash is an indication of allergic reaction. So I'm not telling them to take diphenhydramine. I want them to stop taking it and call the doctor. Three is the opposite of one. So one and three cannot both be right. Do you understand that? 
one and three cannot both be right. I already liked number one, so I'm crossing off number three. Not going to do it. Four, if your doctor, I'm sorry, four, your doctor will decide when you can take, your doctor will decide when you can stop taking rifampin once your cultures are clear. That sounds right. I mean, the doctor is going to make a decision. I don't know when it's going to be, but they'll decide. True. Five, you should expect your urine and saliva to change color after starting rifampin. So um, I, I, when I was talking about what I know about rifampin, I said what I knew, but then once I read this, I go, oh, that's true also. I know that's true. I've heard that. I know that. So it is true. Rifampin changes the color of your urine and saliva. So I'm going to pick one. I'm going to pick four and I'm going to pick five. Those are all my true statements. Good thing I got it right since I wrote the question. All right, next one. You're caring for a 55-year-old male who complains of urinary hesitancy and frequency, which med may be prescribed for this problem. So a 55-year-old male, urinary hesitancy, urinary frequency, sounds like benign prostatic hypertrophy to me, BPH and large prostate. So I'm looking for the med for BPH. And if you don't know it, you're going to have to memorize it. Hydrochlorothiazide is a diuretic. Spironolactone is a diuretic. I can cross those off. Dutasteride and resedronate. So the correct answer is dutasteride, dutasteride. And um, resedronate we did cover um, already. I think it was in a previous video, I think. And uh, that's for osteoporosis. So some of these that are not super familiar to you, you just got to memorize them. Okay. Dutasteride is for enlarged prostate. You're caring for a client with E. coli septicemia, which of the following antibiotics will most likely be prescribed? Fampin, as for TB, gentamicin, that's an antibiotic, oseltamivir, anything that ends in VIR is an antiviral, and E. coli is, is a bacteria. So I'm not going to pick oseltamivir, that's an antiviral, or azithromycin. So two and four are antibiotics and they're both mycins. And I don't know, a couple videos ago, I taught you a little bit about mean old mycins, right? I said, mean old mycins, they're mean because they're used to treat serious infections. Mean old mycins, uh, aminoglycosides, they're aminoglycosides. We call them amino mycin in clinic reviews. So I want to, I want to go just a little more into this. So I want you to remember aminoglycosides call them mean old mycin. These are antibiotics that end in mycin or mycin. Now, if we look at this, I go, well, azithromycin and genomycin both have mycin in it. You're right. So remember this. If it has throw in it, throw it off the list. Oh, this has throw in it. Throw it off the list. It's an antibiotic, but it's not amino mycin. And then I taught you this in a previous video. So if you go back and watch it, you'll learn that mice, mycin, mice, think ears. Mickey Mouse, the big ears, right? Think ears, ototoxicity. So ototoxicity is an adverse or toxic effect of mean old mycins. And then the ear is shaped like a kidney. So also think kidney failure. So ototoxicity and kidney failure are toxic uh, toxicities of mean old mycins. If you get a question like, what should you do if the patient has ringing in their ear or the creatinine is elevated? You go, I'm stopping the med and calling the doctor because those are toxic effects, right? So this person is E. coli septicemia. So I'm going to pick gentamicin because that's the actual aminoglycoside, the aminomycin. Azithromycin is an antibiotic, but it's not aminoglycoside. It's not aminomycin. You are discharging a patient with a new prescription for metronidazole, flagell, which of the following statements indicates Teaching has been effective, so it's a true statement. So metronidazole, true statement about metronidazole. I will not eat red meat while taking this med. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't think so. That's not something I generally teach people, not to eat red meat well, just because of a med. I will not drive while taking this med. I mean, flagell doesn't cause sedation. The only ones I tell people not to drive while they're taking the med is if it causes sedation. And usually I say, don't drive until you know how this med will affect you. Sometimes I'll say, don't drive, like if it's pretty significant sedation. Um, but metronidazole doesn't cause sedation. That's just an antibiotic. I will not eat, I will not eat, sorry, typo. I will not eat green leafy vegetables while taking this medication. 
The only med I know you can't do green leafy vegetables is Coumadin. This isn't Coumadin. I will not drink alcohol while taking this medication. Well, I always tell people not to drink alcohol while taking prescription meds. Don't we always say that? We always say don't take alcohol while taking a prescription med. So that sounds like the teaching's been effective if they say I'm not going to drink while I'm taking this medication. And I was right. I was right. So I hope you noticed as you go through these videos, I hope all 10 of these, I hope you notice how much common sense I'm using. Now there's times I memorize, I say, look, you just got to memorize the drug. You got to memorize, know when the peak time is. You got to know what the side effects or the adverse effects. But a lot of times I say, just use your common sense. Use your common sense, y'all. Okay. So I wish you all the best. If you're taking NCLEX anytime soon, I wish you all the best. This is the last of the 10 farm videos. I hope you find them helpful. You're going to have to send me, send me some ideas about what you want me to do next. Okay. I'll see. Maybe I got some ideas in my head. I'm thinking I might know what I want to do next. So all my best to you. Have a great rest of your week.